So in this video, I'm going to do a little digging into the accuracy of infrared time of flight sensors. Uh, this is abbreviated TOF. So before I get into it, what is a time of flight sensor? A time of flight sensor uses a laser, typically a vexel, uh, to create a signal. And the signal will propagate over to an object, and that object will reflect the signal back. And this will be received by a collector. So the way that that gives you the range or the distance to the object is using the speed of light. And it works something like this. So you have a signal uh, that comes out from the laser vessel, and this is modulated in some fashion. Uh, this signal will return at some later time, still modulated, and this is what the collector will observe. Now there's a time differential between the outgoing signal and the observed signal, and you could use that to calculate the distance traveled by multiplying it by the speed of light. There's a factor of a half that's needed too, because the signal needs to propagate to the object and then back to the sensor. So I want to get back to this question of how accurate are these time of flight sensors? So I'm going to be looking at these inexpensive breakout boards. They're around $10. And typically these have a range of between five centimeters and three meters. I'm going to look at some Pololu breakouts like this VL53L0X. Um, there's a sharp sensor. This is, I think, an older sensor. Uh, and I'm also going to compare that to some ultrasonic ranging. And there are links to the specific modules that we used in the description. So what we've done is we've lined up all of the sensors in a row, facing the same direction and accounting for any small differences in the offset of the distance. And then we measure the distance to an object, in this case a box, at different ranges. There's two different measurements being taken here. So on the left, there's a board that's only compatible with a 32-bit microcontroller. Uh, and on the right, we have the remainder of the sensors going through a regular Arduino. I think you can see that there's definitely some variability in these measurements. And the question becomes, which of these sensors is taking the most accurate readings? So I wanna show you some of the results in a graphical format. So this straight line represents the truth which is when the actual distance matches the measured distance. On the left, I'm going to show you graphs of one sensor at a time. And on the right, I'm going to show you all of the sensors together. So this first sensor that we're going to look at is the VL53L0X. And what you can see is that for short ranges, it's pretty accurate, but there's an offset. And this indicates that you probably need to do some calibration to bring those down. So at about 700 millimeters, you see that there is some drop off and some signal loss. And if you get up higher, you can't even take a reading. Uh, so there's no reading out here at around 1200 millimeters. So the next sensor I wanna look at is the VL53L1X. This is just like the VL53L0X, it just has a longer range. So you can see here at the beginning, it has good readings too. And then there's some drop off and it does manage to take a reading at a further distance, but you know it's gonna need some calibration in order to make those readings meaningful. The next sensor is the VL6180. This sensor has a shorter range than the other sensors, capping out at around 400 millimeters. But within the range where it works, it's actually quite accurate, as you can see shown on the graph. The next sensor is the VL53L3CX. This sensor also has good accuracy for short distances and continues to take readings further out, but uh, these do experience some drop-off. Uh, here we're showing the ultrasonic sensor, the HCSR04. This sensor actually shows pretty good readings all the way across the board, especially up here at the longer distances where the other sensors tended to fail. Um, earlier on, there is some overshoot, but you know, it's honestly not that bad. Uh, finally, I'm gonna show some of the sharp sensor data. Uh, early on, we see some decent data, but as you go further out, you see a big spread in terms of the measurements that are being shown. So one other graph that I want to show you are some histograms of 100 samples at the measurement that was taken at 178 millimeters. So here, the truth is the line through 178 millimeters. So first, the VL53L0X 
it shows a spread of about four millimeters. So you don't have a huge spread. It's pretty localized, um, but there's some offset as we saw in the previous graphs. Similar, you get similar results for the VL53L1X. Um, the VL6180 has a similar spread. It's a little bit closer to the truth at four millimeters um, on the spread. The VL53L3CX is the only one that really shows a tighter spread um, and is at this point very close to the truth. The ultrasonic sensor is offset a bit. It's got a little bit more of a spread, taking some uh, data at a couple different points. The sharp sensor, you know, it's pretty localized, but then you get this tail going down to lower measurements, and this is what we saw uh, in the previous graph. So the last thing I want to talk about is what are the takeaways from this video. So first of all, at short range, the IR time of flight sensors, uh, you know, they work pretty well. When you go out to longer ranges, greater than 60 centimeters, you know, there are some issues. And what you can probably expect is if you're going to try to use these at longer ranges, uh, you might need to do some calibration. Now, if we're talking about specific sensors, you know, if your object is large enough um, and you don't have to worry about the specificity of an IR sensor, you might want to consider using the ultrasonic sensor. It's cheap, um, not difficult to use. Out of the infrared sensors, the VL53L3CX did perform the best. Uh, the difficulty with that is that it can't run its software on an 8-bit microcontroller. You need a 32-bit microcontroller. Personally, I use the Adafruit Feather because it's inexpensive. In general, I'd avoid the sharp time-of-flight sensors. For me, they didn't work very well out of the box. Uh, you might be able to do some additional work to calibrate them, uh, but probably not worth the effort.